Hi, everybody. This is Ryan Denton with Christ in the Wild Ministries, and I'm here today with Kevin Yant. And Kevin is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's our preacher there. And today we're, we have a topic that comes up quite a bit. Um, you know, it comes up for all of us, actually, if you're preaching on the streets right now. It's already come up. And uh, by God's grace, if you're already preaching, you've, you've taken certain steps to, uh, to see that you do go out. But um, it's still a, a question that I, I, I hear a lot as far as uh, people asking me and, um, you know, of course, even as someone who does preach quite a bit on the streets, it's still a question as far as what's the best way to, to go about it. And so uh, the topic today is how do you start as an open-air preacher? Um, number one, how do you start as an open-air preacher? Number two, how do you start an open-air preaching sermon? which is also a, uh, that's just a practical topic. I think all of us can, you know, if, if we do feel like we have a grasp of that, there's still the sense in which, you know, we can still learn as far as how other people go about it, or, or maybe, uh, um, you know, just what the, what, what's the best way to begin an open air preaching sermon? Does it matter as far as your context and location is concerned? I mean, at, at what times do you change that up? Um, or if you, whether or not you do change that up? And then thirdly, how do you start an open air preaching ministry? And, uh, and these are all questions I've, I've been directly asked within the last six months, and it, it, you know, it kind of comes up quite a bit. And so um, today we thought that we would uh, take a bite out of this and see, see what we can do. And um, by God's grace, maybe encourage you or, or equip you or um, maybe exacerbate you. I don't know. Um, but it is nice to have Kevin. Kevin's, you know, Kevin, I'm in El Paso. El Paso, you know, is, is – uh, it can be difficult at times. It can be challenging as far as the open air scene goes, but it's nothing like Albuquerque. And, uh, and so Kevin is in the belly of the beast in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, we dub it the Babylon of the, the Southwest, and it certainly is that. And so um, I, I think it'd be great if Kevin took a minute or two just to kind of um, let us know what's going on over there and, and, and how things are going and, and what you guys are doing. Yeah, thanks, brother. Uh, good to be with you again, and uh, always a pleasure. I'm, I'm thankful that we've had a couple opportunities uh, to get together this year, and you know, got to listen to you preach not too many weeks ago here in Albuquerque, uh, down at Riverside Baptist, and uh, had you and some of the fellas uh, at our house for, you know, early in September when when we went to UNM. You're right. Uh, Albuquerque is a tough town. I mean, it's, it's a difficult place to preach. There's a lot of hostility. The locations that we go on a consistent basis for specifically open air preaching, it's just, it's hard ground, right? First and Central, the bus station. I used to think that was a tough location until we moved four blocks away to Fourth and Central. And uh, I, I had just, I mean, I had no idea. If it wasn't for the faithful brothers that were here on a weekly basis, constantly having your back, I would struggle to want to go out here day in and day out because, you know, the hostility you face, the um, level of anger is, is incredible. And what's so interesting, you can, you can start at the bus station and there can be almost nobody in sight and you get up on the stool and you start preaching. And it's just like, it's just like the devil unleashes all his minions and they come flocking over to you and man, game on, right? You've been here and you've seen that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you go over to fourth and central and uh, it's the same thing. You know, they just come out of the woodwork and it's, it's so crazy. It's, it's uh, I, I don't know, metaphorical maybe, uh, but the corner is dark. And I mean, it's dark in the realm of the unseen world that we don't know is going on. And it's also dark because the street lights above us don't work. And uh, so, you know, <laughs> we're, we're in the time of year when uh, by the time we get down there, the sun's already down. Right. So it's, it's already dark down there. And, and uh, you know, but we've got some guys here that just labor and they're good laborers, Jeff, Mark, Isaac, uh, Brian, they're, they're, these guys are, are just uh, JW. These guys are faithful guys. They're out all the time and, and um, you know, they're here, they're in the fight. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. And, and, you know, I, I don't know, we're not, 
we did have a guy come up a few weeks ago. I'll just tell you about this real quick. And, and he, at, he came up to me, a real soft-spoken guy, a little bit older. And he said, hey, can I ask you a few questions? And he started inquiring. And I'm thinking, okay, I know where this is going. How effective is this? Yada, 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 those kind of questions. Well, it turns out the guy says, I, I really want to get into doing this kind of ministry. So this maybe goes along with what we're going to talk about today. So I invited him to come out with us. Uh, he hasn't yet. We've been gone. We've, you know, kind of had the, the uh, Thanksgiving, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I don't know if he's coming out or what, but uh, I'll keep you posted on that. It's an interesting thing. I think there's a resurgency in uh, open air evangelism. And, you know, Albuquerque is, is a hotbed for the need for it here. We need laborers and we need gospel ministry here. Because this is a tough town, as you know. Yeah, yeah, and and in one area, so they're in the they're on the they're they're on the streets. They're at uh, UNM, and of course, they want to get to UNM more during the day. Uh, their schedules are not allowing that right now. But I tell you, you know, we we're we're able to go up there um, at least once or twice a semester, and and it's UNM's by far one of the craziest, most difficult campuses I've ever preached. And um, you know, I haven't been to all the campuses out there, but I've been to quite a few, and and there is a certain element of uh, spiritual evil that that's almost palpable when you go to Albuquerque, and it's uh, it's another world, and and the the kind of evil that's over there is just really it's it's a unique kind of evil and a unique kind of darkness, and um, just you know if 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 you're watching this, pray pray for those guys. There, by God's grace, there is a team there, and they're all good brothers. Uh, man, we love those guys. We've been working with those guys for a long time now. They're faithful. They're, they're just, they're great evangelists. Um, you can find a lot of the, the footage on our YouTube page and, um, but just keep those guys in prayer. Cause it's, it's, that's no joke over there. And, yeah. and, uh, if you're ever in that area, um, contact us and we'll try to put you into contact with, uh, with Kevin and those guys. And, 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 you know, the, we, we, that's another thing to pray for that. We have more laborers being raised up because the, the harvest is white. Um, it's a tough harvest, but you know, God has his, has, has his elect there also. And yeah. so, um, keep those guys in prayer. Um, you know, and another thing too is, you know, we're, we're, when you start out just to kind of get the topic going, you know, when we start out as open air preaching, Kevin and I actually met in Albuquerque, and that was the first time we actually did any kind of ministry. And, and um, at that point, just to kind of illustrate how I started, and I want Kevin to kind of explain how he started. The first time I saw a guy preaching was actually at UNM. He was, he was preaching at the campus there, and I was, I was uh, 23 years old and uh, newly saved. And the first time I saw him preaching, there was something in me that said, I've got to do this. I was stirred up. I was encouraged. I was excited. I was, I was just into it and I wanted to go out and I, I wanted to do it. Um, I didn't start for another six years and, and, but for six years, you know, it wasn't, there were times when it was way back in the back of my mind, the back of my agenda, but there was always something lingering within me that said, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta somehow do this. Um, and I've, I've, I've met, basically every guy that I know who preaches now, there's a similar story, you know, to something just clinching down when they're seeing open air preaching done, or they're hearing about it, something really just grips them. And they say, I've got to go do this. Now, of course, that's the, what, what, what's called the internal call, um, that the God, the, the, the Lord is burdening you with a, with a desire so that you go and do it. Uh, but of course there's also the external call, but Kevin, Go ahead and first of all, talk about, you know, maybe your internal call that you first had when you, before you started preaching. Yeah, that's really interesting, brother, because, you know, you and I did meet here uh, in Albuquerque. You came over from Gallup, uh, well, I'll say Gallup, through, and um, we met, uh, where did we meet? Did we meet at UNM? I think we met maybe at UNM or we were going to meet at Old Town or something like that. We ended up going to the bus station. Yeah, right. We've been to all three of them. Yeah. Within a very brief time of our, our first meeting. Yeah. Right. So we, you know, we, we kind of connected here uh, through Facebook, I think through Bobby McCreary is how I had come to hear about you or of you when you were in London. And so uh, we connected, we went, and I remember when we went to UNM, the very first place we went to was in the duck pond area. And 
I, I don't know if I told you this or, but the very first time I ever heard a street preacher was when I was a student at UNM. Now that was back in um, the, the 1980s. So, you know, that was a long time ago. Life was a lot different here then. I mean, things were still vile and crazy and, and out of control. I wasn't a believer at the time, although I had grown up in the church, but I, but something struck me about the street preacher and man, I can remember him with people all around him and him preaching. And I don't, I couldn't tell you what he preached. I don't know if it was a good message. He might've been a, you know, uh, you know, one of the Jed smocks of the world. I, I don't really know, but, but he was out there preaching and he was faithful to do that. Um, so that was my first exposure, kind of similar to yours. Nothing inside of me at that time said you need to do that. But, you know, later on, kind of the way I got started is the church that I was attending, they were preaching through Romans and they were insistent that uh, the church began to be become evangelistic. And so, um, you know, I did have an interest at that time. I'd kind of been watching, I think, some videos by like Ray Comfort and sort of learning a little bit about doing evangelism. I've always been evangelistic since I became a believer. And even before I was really a believer, a seeker, if you will, uh, you know, I, I, I've sensed a need to tell people about Christ. So I, I had a desire for that. Well, you know, getting out on the street, I mean, I can just briefly tell you my very first time was going into a, a, di a, a district of Rock Island in Rock Island, Illinois, where I was living. And I think my first open air sermon was seven minutes long. And I, I was I was sick to my stomach the entire week thinking about it. And um, I, I almost collapsed afterwards. I was just like, it was, it was so hard and it was so scary and there wasn't even anybody around, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was, you know, get, biting off that very first one is, is a big deal. So that's, that's kind of my, a little bit of my background on this whole thing. Yeah. And, and cause it, what a great point that there's a difference between knowing you're called to do it and actually going out and doing it. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, the thing is, I mean, that's, that is the hurdle that, that people always kind of struggle with that, that very first hurdle. I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the first time I preached and it was the same thing, seven minutes long. And this was after we drove up there. Uh, I think it took us three hours to get there, my wife and I, and for the purpose of going and preaching. And then when we first got there, we're walking around the plaza and I was just trying to get up the, the, the courage to actually start preaching. And I, I couldn't. And mm. so we got back into the car and we started driving out of Santa Fe. And then I, I turned the car back around and we drove back and it was like, you know, we're here. I just got to do it. And so we made a, basically a beeline for the spot. So I wouldn't have to think too much about it and just, she went under a, a tree and started praying and I went over here and, and the whole time I was preaching, I'll never forget this. There was a homeless guy on a bench and the whole time I was preaching, he had a gun like this and, and he was pointing at me and he's going, pew, pew, pew. And so he's doing that for the, the, it, literally the whole sermon. So I'm trying not to look at him because your first time you don't want to, you don't want any distractions. I'm trying not to look at him, but I'm always looking at him. Um, Nowadays, you know, I mean, and, and that's, you know, by God's grace, it's just like any kind of ministry, you know, you learn as you go. And so uh, now, now, man, I would, I would relish somebody actually coming and, and even engaging, even, even if it's with a finger gun. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's a great situation. Um, but of course, that takes a while to kind of figure out. Now, you know, one other thing too, so you have, you, you do have this internal calling, you know, one thing to, I would caution though, is there's so many I don't know. There's, there's just a lot of people who, who do feel a certain, um, I don't know, euphoria, emotion. It's almost like when somebody who's not saved thinks they're saved at first and they're really excited and they're really pumped up and they're jazzed, you know, and, and for whatever reason, they caught some kind of wave of, of, of emotion, spiritual high, whatever you want to call it. Um, but perhaps it's not the real thing. And then, and then shortly thereafter, it kind of fades away. And so a lot of times, you know, you'll see a, a YouTube video and you'll get excited and it pumps you up or like we've already mentioned, you know, you might see somebody out preaching and you might get excited and pumps you up. And you might think that, oh, I'm, I'm called to do this. Um, 
but then, I mean, there's so many people that, that say that and then, and then they stop doing it within like six months, seven months. Sometimes they go out and they see what it's actually like and, and then they stop. So I think it's difficult, you know, because I think a lot of times the videos, the videos are great because they're edifying. They can teach you a lot of things. I've learned a lot from watching other guys and, and be a video. Uh, but I think there's also a danger in which you can think that open air preaching is always just this, this, uh, excitement you know this 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 uh mosh pit kind of atmosphere sometime and it's it's actually that's not the norm you know that's that's uh that doesn't happen all the time and so i think you know that's something to just caution you know that that there is an internal call of course for people who are being raised up to do it and like kevin already mentioned there's a there's a resurgence going on not only in albuquerque but all over the you know all over the world of people going out and preaching and so and that's a great thing uh, but a lot of times it also leads to uh, a lot of guys who go out and do it and perhaps they're not called to do it. And, and they just kind of got a wave of, of this, you know, this, this open air preaching high. And then when it fades away, they don't go out and do it anymore. So I don't know. I mean, what's, what's the next step, Kevin? I mean, if you have, if you think you're having an internal call, what do you do from there? Yeah, that's a really good question, brother. I, I you know, I think the local church really plays an important role here. I think that, um, you know, while I don't know that you have to be commissioned by the local church to do evangelism work, in other words, meeting with a friend for coffee or even standing around passing out some tracks, I think the call to preach in the open air needs some oversight because there is there are some guys that are that probably shouldn't be out there, right? And I think it would be important that there is a a, a check. Of, of sorts. Now, I, I don't know, you and I haven't talked about this in advance. We've maybe brushed over it from time to time. So I don't know, maybe you disagree with me, but I, I, I'm of the firm belief that there should be some, some participation. And I'm not saying the elders or whatever have to be out on the street. I'm saying they should say they know the character of the man that's going to go out there. They know that he's not neglecting his family to be on the street. They know that he's um, not under church discipline. They know that he's um, a solid guy, that he's capable of handling himself on the street, that apologetically he knows how to not answer every question, but he knows how to answer the basic questions of the faith, that he knows how to handle the word of God properly. You know, he doesn't have to be a theologian of the caliber of whatever, whoever you want to call R.C. Sproul or Edwards or, you know, will you name the person, but he needs to understand how the word of God fits together. I think those are all really important elements to sending someone out. And exactly. I, I, I agree. Um, you know, the difficulty with that is of course there, what, what, what do you do if you're in a church and they're just totally opposed to open air preaching? Not necessarily yeah. you, you might be a good churchman. I've, I've come across this, um, unfortunately, you know, one, one times too many, but that's another scenario. And so, um, I mean, a hundred percent agreement with Kevin, what he's saying that there, there needs to be, if you're in a local church and you should be right. If, if you're a Christian and, and, and the, New Testament explicitly shows that every Christian should have elders watching your, your soul and that you should be meeting together with believers, etc. The question is, what if this group, this body, these, the, uh, your, your church leaders don't really want you open air preaching, not because of you, but because of the, the, the method of um, evangelism in general of open air preaching. Now, um, to me, that's, 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 that's a big problem because it, this is a very biblical basis of, of evangelism. Um, if you have troubles with that, you can, we have a book, it's called a certain sound, a primer on open air preaching. You find that on Amazon or RHB, but not only that, I mean, even, um, some of the past episodes we've done on here, it addresses some of those things, but at the, at the end of the day, there's really no denying that open air preaching is biblical. Um, and of course, if you're somebody who believes in, in, in the sovereignty of God and evangelism, that God saves his elect through the preaching of the word, then there's really no argument against why open air preaching should not be done. Um, and throughout church history, I mean, we've covered this. In fact, our very first episode of, of, uh, 
uh, open air symposium was on the history of open air preaching. And so check that out if you need some kind of biblical and historical basis for open air preaching. Uh, but practically speaking, there are different reasons why people are hesitant about open air preaching and sending, let's say, some of their people from their church out to the streets to do it. Um, and that could be anywhere from, oh, you know, they maybe they've seen some shock and awe Pelagian guys, or maybe they've, um, I, I don't know. I mean, that's probably the main one, honestly. Uh, maybe they have an Arminian view of evangelism where they're saying, you know, that we, we can't push anyone away. We have to, you know, we, we have to entice their, their quote unquote free will, et cetera. Um, but, but those, those arguments really don't hold any weight. And so, um, if that's the situation, I mean, that's, that's tough because, you know, you don't really want to counsel someone to leave their church, but at the same time, I, if it was me personally, I mean, I've done this before, you know, if they're, if it's a church where they're putting the lid on open air preaching, whether or not, I mean, I, I don't know, personally, I didn't. I'm going to find a, a, a group of um, believers and especially leaders, church leaders, who, who see this as a, a biblical method of evangelism. Um, you know, that's not to promote insubordination necessarily, but that's just to say, I mean, this, you know, I take it very seriously as far as open air preaching goes, as far as it being a valid ministry. But here's the thing it's very easy for us to evaluate ourselves and to make ourselves the victim. If somebody, let's say our leadership is saying, no, you shouldn't go out and preach. It's very easy for us to look at them and say, Oh, it's their fault. They just don't trust me. They don't, et cetera. When they could sincerely be seeing some flaws perhaps, or maybe some immaturity in you that might prohibit you from actually going out and doing it. And that might be valid on their part. So it's not to say that, oh, if somebody disagrees that you should open air preach, you should jump ship and go find another church. You know, I consider what they're saying. Really consider, examine yourself, examine what they're saying. Be And, and here's the other thing, be patient with them. You know, try to reason through the scriptures with them and try to show them, you know, humility and, 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 and uh, respect, you know, in the sense of saying, if they don't, if they haven't seen this as a valid form of evangelism, you know, don't just bash them over the head, you know, even metaphorically, but really consider themselves as somebody who is, is a child of God, someone who Christ died for, show them respect, and try to just reason through these things with them before you jump ship, in other words. Mm -hmm. that, that would be the way I would approach it. Because you definitely, like Kevin said, you definitely need, you know, mature Christians giving you the, I guess, the thumbs up and saying, yeah, man, I, I see what you're saying. You feel like you're called to open air preach. I confirm that. I've seen that. I think, I think that's a, I think you're right about that. You need that because that's, if, if we don't have that, we're going to get off into, into the weeds into certain areas where we shouldn't go. Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you've really hit on it really actually very in a balanced way, Ryan. I think you're, you know, I've been involved in a situation similar to what you described. And I have a friend that was, you know, he, re he received uh, criticism for the way he was doing it from the eldership that of the church that he was attending. Uh, I don't recall if he was a member there or not. It seems like he was, but they, you know, it was a smaller town. So they were, they were actually, I think, kind of embarrassed by the fact that he was out uh, in front of some clubs and, you know, just some various different scenarios that were, you know, I mean, he just trying to do gospel ministry, right? I mean, there, were, I watched a lot of his videos and I didn't see anything wrong in his approach or his demeanor or, or anything like that. They just flat out did not appreciate the uh, notoriety they were getting, right? Because they were a small town church that was evangelical, but yet they weren't, they didn't really want that kind of attention. So, and then in my own situation, we, um, this was a good church, right? I would consider it a very good, solid Bible teaching, a 1689 confessional reformed Baptist church that pretty much didn't believe in all member ministry. So in other words, the majority of the ministry had to be done by the professionals. And, um, you know, a situation came up where I was, 
uh, open air preaching and one of the members had a son that was a, a police officer and the police came to kind of, I mean, it was kind of a raucous afternoon for whatever reason. And, um, you know, the word got back to the, the eldership about, we weren't members at this church. We were kind of deciding where we were going to go. Um, I mean, they, they shut it down from their perspective, right? One of their members, a deacon had come out with me and this guy was, this guy was so excited about this. He was excited to be out and he was really actually really good at it too. And, um, and they, they cut him off at the knees. I think that's a shame. Um, yeah. We have the, yeah, I've seen the same situation here. Um, and it's, it breaks your heart. You know, you got guys that you, first, you need more guys preaching, you know? And so when you get a qualified guy who can do it, who's able, who loves, who wants to do it, they're in good standing in their church, but they're saying, no, you know, you don't have a degree. You haven't been ordained. You haven't, whatever it is, you know, I mean, you haven't read the institutes of religion by John Calvin, you know, or what it just, you, it's, it's hard not to strangle somebody, you know, when it, whenever that's right. the situation, not really, of course, but of course, um, it is so tough. And, and actually that too, the, the situation we have um, here is another, that's, that's also a 1689 um, reformed Baptist church. And, and that's not to knock all 1689 reformed Baptist churches. Um, most of them are really, really uh, good. Um, and, and many of them evangelistic. So yeah. that's, it, it does break your heart. Now, what we're trying to say is that it's complicated. Sometimes it's very complicated, you know? So if you have an internal call and you're looking for the external confirmation from others outside of, of, of you and, and, and you're not, you're not finding that, um, don't necessarily think that it's the end of the world at the same time, definitely take into consideration what they're saying. Um, you know, and try to realistically and honestly see if, if, if it's you or if it's them. And yeah, what, what are the answers to the questions, Ryan? Because we, we've got the ideal situation, right? You're a member of a faithful church. The eldership agrees with open-air preaching. They approve you as an open-air preacher. They send out people with you or others go out on the street to watch you and, and to, to cover you, so to speak. Um, okay, so that's the ideal situation. What if we have the less than ideal situation, like I described one of two scenarios, the eldership does not agree, or they're embarrassed by you and they don't want you to do that stuff. So now what do you do? Do you work through it with them? Do you leave the church? Do you uh, have support of, do you set up a parachurch evangelism uh, operation, kind of like Christ in the wild? Uh, wh what do you do? What are the answers for these guys? I, I'm not willing to cut those guys out and say, you can't go out in the street because you don't have the right church situation. I, I think, I think yeah. that's too, I think that's too uh, extreme, if you will. So what are your thoughts, brother? How do we handle the less than ideal situations? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's find, find, uh, <clears throat> You know, again, I think number one is really examine the situation, see if it's you or them and, and look for other counsel and not just people, you know, are going to agree with you, you know, cause there's, yeah. there's plenty of guys like that. And secondly, do not, I mean, I would highly try to encourage you do not become jaded about the local church at large. Don't, don't say, Oh, because this church doesn't like it. And this church and most churches might not like it. That doesn't mean all churches are that way because Christ is, is the scriptures are very clear. We, we're to, be in a local church, to be there with uh, fellowshipping with other believers, worshiping Christ together. There should be, um, it should not just be us with the Bible on the streets, you know, and, and, and doing our thing at home or, or whatever it is. I mean, we're, we're called to be part of uh, members underneath elders, and, and that's biblical. And so, I mean, just, it doesn't make, it doesn't make, it doesn't mean, I mean, it's like open air preaching, you know, if it's, it's an amazing thing. So some people want to th overthrow the whole church, the whole, you know, the whole thing, just because there's a lot of, let's say, um, non evangelistic local churches. So they say, well, I'm just done with all the church. Well, what if they did that to us about open air preaching 
And isn't that the complaint we're making that, well, because they've seen some bad open air preaching, they're saying all open air preaching is bad. And we're saying, oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. But somehow when it comes to the local church, we do the same thing and we think that's okay. And so there, there has to be, you know, an understanding that not every church is, 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 well, actually no church is perfect. And so it's a matter of, even when it comes to evangelism, no church is perfect. I mean, I mean, you can be at a church that, like you said, they, they affirm you as an open air preacher, they send you out. You'll still be able to find things that, you know, well, I wish more people came out. You know, I wish, I wish they would uh, uh, tell people to pray for me from the pulpit more, et cetera. You could always find excuses why you could be upset about the church the church's view of open air preaching. It's just a matter, you know, I mean, as Christian, we, we, we have to be people filled with the fruit of the spirit. We have to be patient. We have to be reasonable. We have to be gentle. You know, we have to, you know, just, I mean, these are our brothers and sisters, you know, even, even the leadership, they're not, we're not talking about the Pope unless you are in a situation like that. And of course leave if that's the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, I mean, I don't think ministers are, are, intentionally being mean spirited most ministers about if they're critical of open air preaching they're simply in a situation they 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 themselves are not burdened about it they themselves have never seen it done perhaps in a way that's biblical and so you know maybe this is our opportunity to kind of help them see that it is biblical now if if it's just you know you're hitting a wall and it's not happening again if it was me i would leave and find a, a church that does affirm that and um, um, actively try to assist you as best as they're able. Understanding yeah. though, they're going to be imperfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm in complete agreement with you, brother. I think it's every situation is unique. And I think, you know, maybe the message that if, you know, people watch this video and, and they have questions about it, um, you know, they're certainly more than welcome to reach out to, you know, Christ in the wild to get some perhaps some counsel. I mean, we don't know the situation, but I, I'm confident we'd be willing to examine the situation and at least have a conversation with them about, about our thoughts. That doesn't mean they necessarily should take our, our counsel, but you know, I think uh, having opportunities to talk with other people that have encountered certain situations, have been involved in certain situations, it really does help. And um, you know, we want to I know your heart in this matter as I believe you would know mine, which is our first and foremost obligation is to honor God. We don't want to, we don't want to tell somebody to, you know, deny their elders, the authority that God has placed in their, in their elders, unless their elders are unworthy of that authority, unless those elders have, have broken the trust of God's rule, then there's opportunities for that. But, um, you know, our desire is for people to be on the street to proclaiming Christ and to do it in a God honoring in a biblical way. We want to see that expand and grow. And then, and then secondly, you know, here's another practical situation. A lot of people kind of wonder about, and, and maybe this kind of is, is why some people don't start preaching. You know, if they have an internal call, they have uh, let's say the support, you know, and the, the other, before we leave that second, um, that first topic, you know, the external call is difficult because before you need to confirm whether you have the internal call, in a sense, you have to go out and preach to see if that's true, you know? So it's it's kind of like a catch-22. So you kind of have to be able to, in other words, you say, okay, I think the Lord's calling me to open air preach. And then you're like, hey guys, you know, I, I, I feel like the Lord's calling me to open air preach. And it's like, well, how do you know? And he's like, well, I have this, you know, I just have this burden. Okay. But you haven't, you haven't done it yet to actually know that. So it is definitely complicated at the very least. It's very complicated. Yeah. That being said, the second aspect of what we want to talk about is what do you do? What do you do when you actually start open air preaching? How do you start? Uh, I, I don't know. Let's say you're like, okay, I'm going to go preach now. What am I going to do now? Of course, the first time, I mean, I still remember, man, the first time I preached in Santa Fe, going back to Santa Fe, well, I had a, uh, I, I, I had a little Bible. And, um, I had a, uh, I think it was like a three by five note card with the gospel on it. And, and not that I didn't know the gospel. I just wanted some kind of reassurance while I'm preaching. And so there was, uh, you know, just basically the, the four things I wanted to talk about God's holiness, man's rebellion, man's fall, man's rebellion, the cross 
you know, what must you do to be safe? Something like that. Um, now that's the first time. And, and, you know, I think in a, in a, in a, in a way, that's a really good way to start, you know, just, just look, I'm going to go out and I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to try to go through, you know, the, the, the full counsel of God, as far as what the gospel is. And, um, I mean, I, I don't think you could ever go wrong doing that if that's your approach. Now, what I have come to find out, and then I, I'll, I'll see what, you know, see what you say, Kevin. When, when I go out now, my first, so regardless of where I am, on a college campus, downtown, wherever, I, I, I do have a passage of scripture in mind that I want to preach almost like I would from the pulpit, expositorily. In other words, I want to go verse by verse through a particular passage of scripture that I already kind of have in mind when I go out. Um, now, when I'm going through that verse by verse, I, I am recognizing that I do want to make sure this is an evangelistic message that I'm preaching to the lost. If you're preaching in the pulpit in church, you're preaching to the saints. Mm -hmm. So it's much different when you're out in the streets. And so kind of having that in mind, in other words, I'm not necessarily no longer preaching the gospel, but I'm preaching the gospel as the text allows. And, and so um, I'm looking for ways to bring these aspects in as the text, you know, drives home those points. Now, on the college campus, though, it's it's different because when you go out, usually not all the time, but usually when you go out to the college campus or or anywhere where there's going to be engagement, right? So you go out there, you have a you have verses in mind you want to preach, you have you know you have this this three point outline, this expository message, and you start trying to preach that. Well, within five or ten minutes, usually um, somebody's going to come up and they're going to have something that they want to say, and and so. Um, now I've met two kinds of people. I've met, I've met people who just want to keep preaching and keep doing what they're doing. And I've met other guys who want to engage with the question with the person who asked the question. And that's, I'm in the second camp personally. I, I, I you know, I'm, when I'm preaching and there's engagement involved, um, I'm, I want to go with that wherever, you know, say I'm preaching on, let's say you must be born again. And someone comes up and they say, uh, you know, um, what's your view on how old the earth is? You know, it's like, okay, well, obviously that's not necessarily the gospel, but that can lead to the gospel. But I want to engage that student because when you start to engage the student and other students come over, you'll be able to start engaging them. And then more people are going to be brought in to hear the gospel because I mean, that's the key, you know, you're trying to lead everything to the gospel, but all I'm trying to say is that the neat and tidy expository sermon that you'd be able to preach in a pulpit very rarely actually pans out on the streets, unless you're like downtown or maybe in front of a sports stadium and people are a little more prone to just kind of walk by a little more apathetic. Uh, but if you're on a college campus, I, I don't think I've ever been able to actually get through a whole sermon without some kind of um, interaction or, or dialogue taking place. So, and that's, again, I mean, in a sense, this is kind of like a personal thing. I, I by no means am like the standard or, you know, this is the way I think everybody who preaches has a maybe perhaps a, a, a little bit different approach to that. And so this is not like a, a I mean, this is just how I do it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think you're, you're good. I, I mean, I, I totally agree with your, your, con, you know, your whole idea of this. And I think you're spot on in what you're saying about it. Uh, college campus, you preach on college campus. I, I mean, not, exclusively but far more than most people do i mean it's it's so you know but when i've been out with you or i have preached on a college campus you're exactly right i mean it it doesn't take but 30 seconds to four minutes before you know somebody's you know a answering you some crazy kind of a question or wanting to engage you or whatever so i i agree we should engage to the level that we can continue to you know, not answer the fool according to his folly, but yet we're still able to articulate gospel truths to people. And sometimes that maybe takes answering a question or two uh, before it just becomes a litany of rabbit trails and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, how do we get going? I'm like you. I have a text in mind, Romans 1, Romans 3, John 3, Titus 3, Isaiah 6, uh, you know, the prodigal son. I mean, all of those things I like to preach from because 
I think that there's so many amazing directions that you can take that. And uh, so I do the same thing. I have a text in mind. I open it up. I'll, I'll read it. I'll go back and it, well, I'll exegete as I'm reading, trying to draw home biblical truths and gospel all, all sprinkled throughout. And, you know, I, I just think that's the best way to do it. Just getting the word of God out into the open air um, is is effective, right? Isaiah fifty five eleven. We know that uh, we we got a good article on it on on the blog. So, you know, get the word of God out. And I think what's interesting, brother, is even on the college campus, even if you begin to stand up and speak, they know what you're talking about, and and people that want to engage to be hecklers will come over and heckle you. People that actually want to listen will listen. And then, you know, there's always the opportunity that the Lord has his sheep in that mix. So uh, I'm, I'm in lockstep with you on, on this whole conversation. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, the, the thing is, you know, I, again, you got to, our, 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 our goal is to get to the cross, regardless of what topic comes up. But, you know, I, I think, I think too, though, I mean, honestly, you know, before you start preaching, you know, you're really concerned about what am I going to say when you go out? Well, again, just go out and say it, you know, you know what you should, you know what the gospel is, you know, you know, you just, the, the hardest thing is to go out and say it. And so a lot of times we can get so hung up on saying the exact right thing that, you know, having the right thing to say when we first go out there, we kind of use that as maybe um, an excuse to actually not do it because we're saying, yeah, but I just, I'm not quite sure what to do yet. And you keep saying that and you keep saying that and pretty soon years go by and you're still not quite sure what to say when you go out. Mm -hmm. You just got to go out and do it. You know, I think, and then once you, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. So I think a lot of time, even that question might be used. I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of times I think that question itself might be used as a, as a, almost like a scapegoat, you know, to kind of um, protect you from doing it. You know, you just got to go do it. And then, you know what the gospel is, go and go and preach the gospel, just in a sense, like you would share it, but now you're proclaiming it. Now it's Caruso, you know, you're, you're saying it with authority, you're, 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 you're preaching it. Um, so you just got to do it. And uh, I, I mean, that's, that, that, that's a, I think it's in a sense that that's a, it's, it's simple, but just stand on God's word, trust in God's word, trust in the authority of God's word, that it doesn't return void, go out and do it. And, and God will be glorified through that. That's a straightforward answer, isn't it? Let, just get out there. And, you know, whether it be, I mean, I, I, I'll have to admit it would be pretty hard. My personality would be difficult to just for me want to ever get started completely on my own. I mean, I admire somebody that could actually just go out on their own or, you know, like you did with Tasha and just, just get started, even though it's absolutely terrifying. If you have a group, a, a church that you are, belong to and and they already have evangelists get on with them and, and get started but if you don't and maybe the church wants to start a ministry or, or something like that I mean there are there are help for that that available I think the best thing to do is watch some of the videos on Christ in the wild or other good good you know open air guys there's a lot of them out there I mean we got a lot of friends that are open air guys and there's a lot of great resources just to see what they're doing and how they do it. And then you just kind of try to emulate them to get started. And then you'll develop your own, uh, your own system, if you will. Yeah, that's a terrific point. It's so much easier if you have other guys with you. And if you don't like Kevin say it, I mean, reach out to us and we'll try to find what city you're in and we'll try to put you in contact with guys in that area. If you don't know of anybody, if you, if you're interested, um, I mean, like Kevin said, ideally it would be the church, you know, where you're at and maybe just find us some guys that want to go out. Maybe they can just pray for you or pray with you and hand out tracks, et cetera. If you need tracks, go to our website. We can definitely provide you with those for, for a, for a very, very reasonable uh, cost. And if you don't have any money, we'll provide, provide them for you uh, for free. I mean, um, but yeah, just, that's, that's so true. It's so much easier when you have guys with you. And so use that, you know, there's a reason I think the Lord send people out, sit people out um, in twos and pairs, because it's just for, for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons being, it's just encouraging. It's so much, you, you just, you have more courage, you have more boldness, you have more comfort. Um, 
Yeah. And, and if not, I mean, the, the, the thing is, though, remember, like Paul says, you know, he, he's talking about how these other people had forsaken him. But he said, but the Lord stood with me. The Lord strengthened me. The Lord stood with him. And so if you are in a situation where it's just you, um, I mean, sometimes that's, you got to do that too. And uh, that's not ideal, but, you know, it is sometimes that's the way it is. Now, and I would be careful of the context too. Like if I was Kevin, I'm with Kevin, man. Now there is one guy in, in Albuquerque. He's, he's, he's bold as a lion and, uh, and he'll preach in front of like bars and stuff and, and, and by himself. Um, if I was in Albuquerque, I'd have a hard time going out by myself, man. That's a rough place. So it, I, for me, it kind of depends on the context, you know, if I've never been to a campus, um, actually I, I tell you, I, there have been times when I've gone solo to campuses I've never been to. It's, it's never ideal, you know, and I, and I still go to a lot. Um, I would encourage if you, I would encourage you to record what you're doing, honestly. Um, again, that's ideally you don't, if you don't have that capability, you don't have it, you know, trust in the Lord. If you do have it, I would use it. You know, um, I see that as kind of like just the Lord equipping us with certain things, being wise as serpents. Um, so if, if you are solo, I would really encourage you to get a GoPro or get something to record it. Um, that's saved us f from so many things. I can't even number the times it's, it's actually gotten us off the hook just by being able to say, Hey, look, this is what actually took place. Yeah. Right here in Albuquerque. I think that happened right at UNM that yeah. girl accused you of, uh, laying hands on her or something like that. Uh, one of our guys. Yeah. And yeah. And, and that was overturned. It was clear. That was uh, a false report. Um, a few times in Albuquerque, actually things like that have happened. So, and it's getting worse. So you got to have some kind of mechanism, you know, I would encourage that um, in the day and age we're living in. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Those are good, good points. And I, I think that, you know, it's, I guess at some point in time, if, if the spirit is stirring you, if you believe that you are a believer, if you're, a, you know, a, a part of the body of Christ and you want to get out there and the spirit seems like it's calling you to do that. I mean, reach out and ask us questions or get out there and do it, you know, get somebody. I mean, I think, you know, there's other reasons of value to have a partner. I mean, you know, Mark here, he got a stool, a stool kicked out from underneath him one night, not too many months ago. And, you know, just watching each other's backs is a, is a important reason to have that, have that help. I mean, you know, it's a crazy world we're living in. Yeah, that too, right? To have, have your back. One time in Albuquerque at the bus station, I had my GoPro. I used to wear it around a uh, shoestring, a leather shoestring. And um, yeah, Kevin, you were there too. When we had all those guys down at the bus station and this guy started, he got the shoestring and started choking me from behind. And this guy was lunatic, probably, you know, definitely drugged out um, off in his mind. But, but I, you know, the other guys jumped on him and took him off and, uh, so it, it wasn't a problem, but without all the other guys, it definitely might've been a, a at least a, a wrestling match to try to <laughs> free up the GoPro in my neck. Um, but yeah, be, be wise as serpents, you know, innocent as doves, but wise as serpents. Mm. Uh, and then the last topic we're going to talk about is, is, is open air preaching ministries. Um, and I've, I've been asked that a lot. And, and honestly, I mean, here's the thing. I don't know having an open air ministry, open air preaching ministry, evangelism ministry is, um, there's not a lot of guys that do this. And I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I honestly, the thing is what we've always tried to do with our ministry is to make sure that it doesn't replace the local church, that it's not, it, it it's not, I mean, I think a lot of what we do is not just open air preaching and that that's intentional. You know, we want to be able to have video like this. We want to be able to have literature. We want to be able to, to have um, conversations on the side with people who are open air preaching. And, and, you know, we're, we're under the authority of our local church here and, and um, that's intentional you know, it's a hard thing. I don't know. I mean, you have to be, to me, it's, it's, it's a, it's a unique situation. I'm very thankful to the Lord that, that I'm able to do it full time. Um, there's not a lot of people that are able to do that. And it's by no means anything I've done. I, I, I can honestly say I haven't really done anything special to be able to be in this situation. It's just 
kind of the way the Lord has orchestrated and ordained things where I'm, I'm, I have the opportunity right now. And that's not to say it'll always be here. You know, there might be a time when I have to go out and tent make and, or do something else. I don't know. Um, but it, I think it is an unusual scenario in, I, I get the impression that a lot of times people say, well, I'll just kind of just go out and kind of just wing it and, and just trust in the Lord. You know, and mm. I, you know, I got all this debt. I got all, you know, I don't have any money saved up and, but you know, I'm just going to trust in the Lord. I'm just going to jump out there. And, and I, I mean, I don't know that to me, I don't know if I lack faith. Um, but to me, it's kind of, it's kind of seeing God open up situations before you go out in that direction where you are able to, because first and foremost, we have to provide for our families. We have to be able to, you know, whatever situation we're in, uh, be able to eat, um, I mean, it, it's just the practical things, you know, the things that Paul himself at times went through. Um, we, we, we've got to be able to do that first and foremost. And so I, I just, I guess I want to discourage the notion that is something that everybody who open air preaches should do. And it's not, it's by no means because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I want the market to myself, so to speak. I wish in a sense, everybody could go out and, and be full-time open air preachers. But I just, I, I don't want to put people in situations where they, they go out and they fail and, and, you know, their, their families are, are in a mess because of it. Um, I don't know. Now it's not to say that nobody should do it. I mean, to me, it, the big thing is don't let it replace the local church, you know, don't let it replace the local church. The local church is important. Um, I, I've honestly always kind of struggled as far as the tension, as far as saying, okay, what, what, what does Christ in the wild ministries do um, that the local church does not or cannot do? And, and, and again, I think in an ideal world, maybe you wouldn't need ministries like this. Uh, but the reality is, you know, we're here to equip and aid um, even churches, you know, as far as open air preaching goes and, and, and training, evangelism trainings go and things like that. We've done a lot of that. So it's just a, it's in other words, it's, it's almost to, to assist the local church It's to, to help out the local church it's, it's not to replace it. Um, I don't know. I mean, Kevin, what, what are your thoughts on, on starting an open air ministry? Yeah. I, you know, I do have a lot of thoughts on it. I think it can be good or it can be bad uh, or it could probably be anywhere in between. Uh, I think, if a person is getting started in open air ministry, they should be, and, and they are the member in the, in the right church or they're part of a, of a good church that is supportive. They ought to just be in the church evangelizing. Uh, I'm okay with that. If, you know, if the church or, or if a, a person has a desire to start a ministry outside of the church, inside of the context of the local church, like, you know, you're an elder at your church, you, um, you know, you're a faithful member and you do your ministry inside the context of it. Now that your church doesn't have authority over the ministry per se, I think Christ in the wild is serving a good purpose. So I think that's the ideal situation that, you know, you're still doing all that you're being called to do as a believer. Um, I think that there can be a context for someone that's outside of a church where perhaps they're in an area. My friend Todd lives in an area where he's, you know, he's struggled to, to hit the right, uh, the right church. And so he's, you know, his ministry is, you know, I counsel with him and, and another friend and we, you know, some other guys, he has a board of directors and, and they sort of, you know, they provide oversight, if you will. Um, you know, I've encouraged him as best whenever the possibility comes about to be under the authority of a local church, but it hasn't worked out at this point in time. I'm not against what he's doing at all. In fact, I'm in favor of it because he is out there. He is diligent about preaching the gospel on college campuses and th different, different places. So and he has gone down to serve other church families to help them, you know, be more evangelistic. So I'm in support of all of that kind of stuff. If, if the gospel, if the gospel is going forward, who in the world am I to say, you know, let's hold it back. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a complex, it's a complex 
topic. It does not deserve a quick and easy answer. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's the other point too. I mean, um, there's always the ideal, and and I think in a lot of ways these are areas where you know the scriptures are um, difficult as far as whether or not how they would, I guess, view ministries. You know, other than the fact, again, you have Paul the apostle very much always connected to his church. He's always sent out. He's all, he is sent out. He keeps in contact with his church. Of course, he's planting churches. Um, we're not, you know, we think that, that church planting should be done by churches. Um, but again, I mean, we, we, we kind of see ourselves as maybe just a, a sidekick, you know, to kind of help out in certain areas that, 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 I don't know if the local church is equipped, you know, to handle all the time as far as like open air preaching goes. These are, these are things, I mean, most pastors are not called to do that. They don't know what to do with it whenever it comes their way. And so uh, that's something we try to help out with and provide, um, you know, just to stir up the saints, to encourage the saints, to keep up the work. Again, we have gospel tracks, we have books, we have um, shows like this. And so it's, it's not just open air preaching. Um, per se, as far as going out and doing it, not to say that that's wrong, if that's all that ministry does, whatever particular ministry we're talking about. But I think each scenario is going to be different. And there is the ideal. And then there's um, um, kind of the uh, the messy situation that we're still left with here on earth as, as we uh, continue to be sanctified and grow in sanctification. So yeah, amen. Yeah, I agree with you, brother. I think those are all uh, excellent points. And, you know, we are where we are, right? I mean, um, Christ in the wild exists, other ministries exist. And, um, you know, unless they're doing something heretical and unless they're really like opposed to the local church, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with them. I think that there, there are nuances, there are complicated issues. There they're probably not as easy to answer for us on, on, a, on this program as what, what it could be, or there can be. Uh, so I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy sitting here in Albuquerque and, you know, working for my family and going to school and trying to minister the gospel when we can. And, and so, um, you know, we've got a lot going on, all of us do, and, and we can't solve all the problems of the church. We need to be faithful in where we are, where the Lord has us. And I think you're doing that. I'm doing my best to do that. And I know a lot of other brothers and sisters that are as well. So we, we can be thankful that these ministries do exist and they are out there probably filling a, a void that quite honestly, the majority of the professing evangelical church is absolutely falling flat on its face about. Yeah. And as always, you know, thanks, thanks for tuning in. And, and we'll continue this um, as far as this series goes. And hopefully within maybe two weeks, we'll have another topic to, to kind of go over. Check out our blog. A lot of this, a lot of this stuff can be seen in, in written format on our blog. You go to ChristInTheWild.com uh, slash blog, I think. Right, Kevin? I believe I so, it. yes. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. So. Um, and, and, you know, if you have any questions, again, there's a contact page, you go to Christinthewild.com. There's a contact us page. You can contact us that goes straight to us. Um, Kevin's our PR guy. So if you have any, if you have any, uh, difficulties or discrepancies or, or, or criticisms, contact Kevin. Um, <laughs> he loves criticisms. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Kevin, Kevin's good at handling all of that, but, uh, we'll definitely, we'll, we'll both be getting that. Um, you know, again, if you, if you, we're here. We want to help you out to the best of our ability. Um, so feel free to contact us again, subscribe below. If you haven't done so already, thanks for watching this and um, you know, may the Lord bless you and hope you have a uh, good holiday season, whatever you call it, whether you celebrate it or not, you know, just, just uh, may it be Christ exalting and, and Kevin, any, any last words, Kevin? No, I think, brother, you've nailed it, and uh, it's a, always a joy to hang out with you, even though it's uh, from a few hundred miles away, but uh, yeah. it's great that this technology works, and glad that we can hopefully minister to the body of Christ in any way, shape, or form as is possible, and, uh, you know, keep preaching the gospel out there, brother. We're, uh, I'm always encouraged. 
Yeah, pray for us. That's that's we definitely ask for that. Just pray for us. Uh, we need that. We appreciate your prayers. And until next time, Lord willing, God bless.